All right, we'll jump right into it. So uh, Cranberry Creek. Uh, so Cranberry Creek is a, a Willoway introduction. Uh, we grow it as an upright kind of pyramidal form. Um, we like it because it, you can see here in the photo, it's, we think it's a little better than mountain because it keeps a full bottom. You can see how full that is at the bottom of the pot. Uh, it's definitely denser. Um, it has uh, kind of a unique foliage to it, um, kind of rounded leaves. Um, and it's, it, it, it's just a nice plant to have out there. Uh, we do have quite a few of these. Uh, nothing's heading towards the scrap pile, but you know, 10,000 is a lot to have. So we, we want to try to keep pushing this plant out there, get some movement, uh, but a great plants in the PTW program. So see what you can do there. Uh, Cornus Arctic Fire Yellow. So uh, I know it's kind of counterintuitive. Usually when you say fire, you think of red, but Arctic Fire Yellow is something uh, that they had. The, the whole intention was to, to really bring uh, more red in, um, but uh, they were having some issues with the, the plants staying red, but they were definitely able to keep the plant yellow. So they kind of switched the breeding towards that. Um, but you can see there, it's a fantastic yellow. Some of the older varieties of yellow get a lot of dead sticks, stuff like that in the winter. Mm -hmm. Uh, this thing has none. Um, it came through. It, it actually has a, well, kind of a waxy stem, so it really resists that desiccation that causes those those dead stems to happen over the winter. So uh, it's a, and you can see they're very striking. It's been striking all winter. Um, really see it from a distance, and and you know I I really like it. So. Um, not known much for its flower, but it does flower and it will have berries that are very attractive to wildlife. Um, they usually go pretty quick. It's probably one of the first things the birds go after. Uh, so uh, it's definitely a positive for uh, attracting wildlife. The, the good kind of wildlife, not the deer. So, All right, uh, Buxus green gem. So we were able to uh, bring some of these in to help enhance our inventory. You can see there, that's what they look like. Um, you know, we worked with the grower. Uh, they did a fantastic job of growing these. Really like them. Cheryl, happy? Absolutely. Yeah, Cheryl's happy. So if Cheryl's happy, everybody's Absolutely. happy. So we have 2,500. So this was kind of a last minute thing. We told you a few weeks that these were coming. They are here, they're on current, yes. yes. I just did some All right, so kind of a last minute opportunity. If you wanna get some of these, uh, booked up and shoved on loads there they're ready to go um green gem is a slower grower it's probably one of the one of the slowest growing boxwood that we grow uh, you can see there very dense habit to it uh, usually used for more formal settings uh, formal gardens you know uh, a lot of topiary type gardens uh, it responds very well to trimming so uh, that's kind of its wheelhouse, but uh, all right, magnolias. So uh, these are all sold. So you can't have any if you don't have them already, but we wanted to show you what they look like. So they're looking really good. Uh, Royal star, which is off to your right, that's gonna show the most flower. That's the earliest bloomer. And then uh, Leonard Messel in the middle. And then Ann is to your left. Ann's gonna bloom later than Messel and star. Uh, but you can see there how swelled those buds are for sure next week with uh, the supposed heat. I'm not going to wood. We're supposed to have heat next week, but we should start to see some cracking color on the purples. And then next week, the I would expect the royal stars to be out in full. Uh, that is typical. It's the right time for that to happen. It's not really too early. It's usually mid-April when that happens. So we're, we're, we're right there. So uh, just wanted to let you know, um, that way you know what's shipping, what's going out. It's better, if, if you really have a customer that's concerned about the bloom, it's very important that you get them out next week. Uh, if it's more just for the landscape, the normal thing, um, you know, whenever, but, uh, it's, it, it comes back to the bloom. You don't want to be shipping something when it's in full bloom if you really want to keep the bloom looking good. But probably a lot of these are going towards the landscape route, things like that. So that's a little different game. All right, uh, Spiray, a little spark. 
So this is a newer one. Um, yeah, Cheryl says it's cute. So that is a technical term. So this is a new one coming on, uh, first edition program. Uh, you can uh, see there the what it's going to do in the summer. It's that flower is like neon, so it like glows. Uh, it's really cool. We pink sparkler was about the same, how it how it kind of glowed. But this one here is definitely much more compact plant. Uh, it uh, you know stays within its footprint, uh, takes minimal maintenance, does very good job of repeat blooming. So that's why we felt uh, it was worth bringing on last year. Uh, don't have a huge amount available. We have 330, but they're there. Very nice plant, uh, good plant to uh, start talking about here in a couple of weeks. So uh, that's why we wanted to get it out. And last but not least, spilled wine. So hopefully I don't have to say too much about spilled wine. Been out there for a long time. This is a kind of a flat spreader. Um, not a creeper, but uh, it spreads more than it gets tall, but we really wanted to show you what they look like. So that is a today photo in the middle. You can see there, we're starting to get leaves. Um, there's a couple of uh, last year's leaves still hanging in there. Those will, those will kind of fall out here um, as we move them around a little more, but they do come out kind of green. And then as we get more sunlight, uh, they'll get that deeper color. So if somebody gets them in and says, hey, they're kind of green, that is typical for this time of year. Uh, that red color will really turn on the 1st of May. Okay, so obviously less, less light, the plant's going to produce more chlorophyll. More chlorophyll, the greener the leaf will be. As it gets more light, it won't have to produce as much. So that's where the pigments will come in. So uh, anyways, that's where we are. Uh, looking good. We got plenty of availability. You got quite a few of them booked too. So we just wanted to show you what was happening. All right. Um, real quick on digging. Uh, digging's going. Uh, we're past the halfway mark. Uh, looks like we've, we uh, are uh, dug uh, past, you know, what the halfway mark for what was booked. So uh, Coming down through, uh, we did pull out amelanch here, a few other plants, uh, top graph lilacs. Uh, we had to hurry up and dig all of those, so they're all out of the ground, uh, just because they were starting to progress in the field. Um, it's slightly earlier than normal, but you know, usually, usually when you get to the 12th or the 15th, you got to do it. So it, we're getting there. Um, we still have some time on deciduous, uh, but. Uh, you know, if you got anybody on a fence with a new order, we have the horsepower to get it dug. Uh, if you got anybody on a fence with a new order, now's the time to go. Um, don't wait too much longer. Uh, we should be able to dig all the way to May, not deciduous, but we will be able to dig conifers up to May. But, uh, you know, this is the time of year, and, and once they start to break growth, we, we have to stop. So, um, that's where we are. Things are going good. Uh, we do have all of our supplies. Uh, I don't have really supplies that I'm willing to share with anybody. So if anybody does ask, I, I know people are starting to run short. Um, we, we have enough for our needs and I would help if I could, but I, I don't think I can. So um, that's, that's where we are there. 